bell rings at the start of auctions at Tsukiji. It's 6 a.m. at the world's largest fish market. The day's bluefin tuna sales are getting underway. Sellers shout prices and booming voices. Buyers place their bids with discreet hand gestures. Just like every morning for the past 20 years, Shigeo has come to buy fish. With flashlight in hand, he can gauge the quality of the fish at a glance. Bluefin tuna holds no secrets for him. This is a piece of the tuna number one, which is supposed to be the best one this morning. As you can see, it has a fatty part and a beautiful red colour at the same time. These are the two main things to look for. Today's bluefin tuna were fished off Algeria, Morocco, Spain or elsewhere in the eastern Atlantic. They were frozen right after catching to preserve the quality of the meat during transport. Each weighs around 50 to 200 kilos. Trade in Mediterranean and Eastern Atlantic bluefin tuna was not suspended, so it's business as usual at Tsukiji. This morning I only bought one fish, the number 16. It cost me 20 euros a kilo. After the auction, the tuna is carted off to smaller market shops where it's cut up and sold by the piece. Here, bluefin tuna is a real business. We meet Shigeo again in his little shop. He's cutting the bluefin tuna he just bought to the size required by his customers. Hey, Hiro, who's this piece for? Delivery shop. For a sushi delivery shop. Uh, it's for sushi. They'll cut my big pieces again to make sushi slices out of them. Shigeo's gestures are precise. He's cultivated his knowledge for years. But he's now struggling for survival. Growing competition from mass retailers is threatening Tsukiji's bluefin tuna middlemen. Nowadays, big companies and mass retailers trade directly with industrial fishing companies. Mass retailers buy huge quantities from these producers and then sell the fish at low prices, so they're able to move enormous volumes of tuna. That's good for them, but the fact that all this low-priced bluefin tuna is now circulating on the markets cuts into our profits and endangers our jobs. Shigeo cannot compete with mass retailers who now run their own fish processing facilities. These days, a growing portion of bluefin tuna trade does not transit through fish markets like Tsukiji anymore. Mass retailers buy direct from fishermen to cut costs. Prices then decrease and bluefin tuna, which used to be a delicacy, has now become a common meal, as anyone who goes to a supermarket can see for themselves. Wakao, a Greenpeace member, leads us to the fish counter. Um, since it's, um it's sold in cheap price, affordable price. And also, since this is uh, this kind of tuna uh, you can find in pretty much everywhere, every supermarket in Japan, um, people or consumer uh, doesn't have an idea um, how endangered this um, fish is in the environment, in the oceans. Mm -hmm. Who decides about the price, keeping a cheap price? Usually, supermarket is the one who decides the end price. And, uh, most of the supermarket, or I say retailer, supermarket or restaurant, um, if they raise the price, um, they are scared that consumer or customer will go to uh, the other supermarket. In order to maintain low prices, several Japanese companies have stockpiled frozen bluefin tuna, equivalent to more than a year of Japan's consumption. The topic is sensitive, and we've been denied access to these giant freezers by the companies who own them. Some Japanese are sharply critical of the mass marketing of bluefin tuna. In the Mediterranean or Eastern Atlantic, whole tuna schools are caught with large nets. They're then put in farms where the fish are nurtured. However, researchers say it's nearly impossible for them to reproduce in cramped captivity, so their numbers thin out and they must be replenished with newly caught fish. Low prices and withering of tuna species are also threatening Japanese fishermen's incomes. We're here in Kesanuma, one of Japan's biggest northern ports. At this season, most of the tuna boats are under maintenance. Sataro, the owner of this boat, welcomes one of his former fishermen aboard. 
Fish prices drop a little more each year. Japan has been hit by a recession, so the price of low-value fish increases, while at the same time the price of high-value fish, such as bluefin tuna or southern tuna, goes down. Farm bluefin tuna and illegally overfished tuna are widely imported in Japan, and this leads to a fall in wild tuna prices. But the wild tuna fishing we do is strictly controlled here. That's just how things are. You know, when we fishermen, when we want to buy fish at the supermarket, the same fish that we actually catch and sell in the first place, it's too expensive for us. Sotaro and Masanobu's fishing techniques have become unprofitable. They use a trolling line, one long fishing rod, to which smaller rods with fish hooks are tied. Large-scale net fishing threatens Kesanuma's fishermen. Even in Japan, net fishing has advanced dramatically over the past 20 to 30 years. We've been fishing on a trolling line for more than 100 years. Maybe our fishing method isn't that efficient in terms of catching large quantities of fish, but at least we respect resources. Trolling line fishing can go on because it doesn't harm bluefin tuna. But if large scale net fishing continues, bluefin tuna will disappear. If bluefin tuna were to be removed from Japanese menus, it would be seen as tragic. The country's inhabitants have gotten used to its soft and melting texture, which they savor in sushi or sashimi. They now eat 80% of the world's catch. So Japan is therefore trying to find sustainable solutions. One answer may be found here, in Oshima, 250 miles west of Tokyo. After 35 years of research, scientists have developed a completely farm-raised bluefin tuna. No need to sap the sea's resources, scientists here raise eggs of farm tuna. It's a whole new system. Fishermen are rather happy. I could even say satisfied, as our activity does not reduce the stock they fish. If the resource is protected, I guess it's a good thing for them. This fisherman from Kinki University who developed this project brings us to these tuna. Their production level is still limited. Many baby fish still die during the raising process, but enough survive to fill up these farms. In this net, there are about 200 of them. They're now three years old and big enough to be fished on a structured catching system. OK, the fish took the bait. Let's send the electric charge. Here we go. The tuna's dead. The electricity was efficient. The fish dies the instant we send the electric charge into its body. It doesn't struggle or fight back. It needs to be killed very quickly in order to preserve the quality of the meat. This tuna, which was just caught, has been fed fish bait without antibacterial agents. Natural food for quality fish, goes the slogan at Kinki University. Once caught, the fish is immediately gutted and packed in ice to be kept overnight. The next day, a marine, Kinki University's trading branch, prepares the fish for delivery. Our tuna is a little more expensive. A marine has become a label because this tuna is a full-cycle farmed fish from Kinki University. It has been recognized as a brand, and we sell it at a little higher price. What's the price difference? About 25% more than regular farmed tuna. A marine sells 100 tuna a month. Its customers are mainly department stores or restaurants such as this one. A little more than a year ago, Zhao put Kindai tuna on its menu. It served as sashimi or sushi. 
We serve this King Key University tuna because they provide guarantees on their product's traceability, which reassures us on its quality. It's fully farmed tuna, which means we can eat it forever. It tastes good, and the good thing is that it will never be listed as an endangered species. But customers have the final word. This family is eating this fully farmed bluefin tuna for the very first time. Mmm, tastes good. Oh, look at him. He's eating the best parts. <laughs> if this kindai tuna is more expensive, I'll probably go on buying regular bluefin tuna. But maybe if you're older and have more money... Well, it's true that at my age, price does matter less than the product's quality. If you also take environmental issues into account, I might very well buy some. For now, Kimki University is having trouble growing fast enough to meet Japan's huge appetite for bluefin tuna. So until then, what sacrifices are Japanese consumers ready to make in order to keep their beloved fish from becoming extinct? The only answer seems to be for Japan, but also the rest of the world, to return to its earlier ways. To return to a time when bluefin tuna was only a delicacy for special occasions.